So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and one of my favorite travel accessories for the M1 iPad Pro or any iPad Pro for that matter finally released on Amazon. So I wanted to create a video kind of highlighting my favorite travel accessories for the iPad Pro, for the M1, and pretty much everything that I carry with me that can now fit literally on the back of my Magic Keyboard thanks to this Ori grid. But without further ado, we're gonna go through all the travel accessories, the ones, the new ones that I've added, some of the ones that I've had for over two years now at this point. So stay tuned, relax, and let's get into this video. Okay, so the first item that we gotta talk about is the actual iPad. So the iPad that I rock, if you guys are new to the channel, I have the M1 iPad Pro, the baseline 12.9 inch, so 128 gigs of storage, eight gigs of RAM. I got in the space gray variant, but then I also, I have this Pitaka case on the back of it, which is made for the iPad Pro. So this Pitaka case is absolutely awesome, and it's part of their like PETA flow system, which I'm gonna have a whole separate video kind of describing that because it's all about magnets, and I have, I have another you know Mag Easy product that I'm gonna show you guys from Pitaka, but this is the Pitaka case for the iPad Pro. Like I mentioned, it's ultra thin. I believe it's only 0.5 millimeters in thickness, and the reason it's so thin is because they created this to be able to work and be compatible with the Magic Keyboard. So this thing, even though you have a case on here and there's a break in the pin connectors, it'll still work because A, there are pin connectors right here. So there's pin connectors that bypass the original ones. I'm gonna stop saying pin connectors, but you can see that there are pin connectors right here that will work and bypass through the Magic Keyboard, which will allow you to still use the Magic Keyboard with zero issues. And on top of that, it gives you some nice side protection which is something that we never had with the Magic Keyboard case. It protects the front and the back, but not the railings or the sides. So this is nice to have if you guys are looking for a case that is compatible with the Magic Keyboard. Look no further than the Pitaka case. I absolutely love it, and it keeps that air mid fiber look, which I have across all my devices. So yeah, it works perfectly. And before this, people are probably gonna ask me, can it work with a D-brand skin, or with a skin on the back, or with a screen protector? So it does work with a screen protector. I have the Paperlite screen protector on the iPad Pro. They're a channel sponsor, so definitely check them out. They're the number one thing. You gotta protect your iPad screen for resale value because it's the number one thing that people interact with. So highly recommend getting yourself a Paperlite, but it does work with this one and any other screen protector. And before this iPad, I had the 2018 iPad Pro with this Pitaka case on it with a D-brand skin on it. So even a D-brand and a screen protector on the iPad Pro, and this will still fit on there, no problem and it'll still work with the three pin connectors on the Magic Keyboard. And the next item obviously has to be the Magic Keyboard itself. I've mentioned it a bunch of times already, and I've been using the Magic Keyboard since day one. I actually had an issue with the original Magic Keyboard after about a year of use, where the trackpad was getting a little bit wonky, but went through Apple support, they replaced it no problem, and I didn't even have Apple Care. So that was amazing, zero dollars out of my pocket, they replaced it, no problem. But again, I've been using a Magic Keyboard since the day it released, and I would recommend no other product. I mean, the other only ones that I would kind of recommend are maybe Bridge, the Bridge Max Plus. I think that's a good alternative because it is about $100 cheaper, but it doesn't have that perfect trackpad consistency that we're so used to. And another great Magic Keyboard alternative is the Logitech Combo Touch. That is great when it comes to actual function with the trackpad and the function keys as well. But the accessories that I'm gonna show you aren't gonna work with that one because it's so bulky. So in my opinion, the Magic Keyboard, even though yes, it is $300 to $350, it is very expensive. In my opinion, if your iPad Pro is your main computer, there's no other accessory that's gonna give you that type of functionality and that feel than the Magic Keyboard will with your iPad Pro. But now we got the main stuff out of the way, let's talk about exactly what's on that Magic Keyboard and that iPad Pro. So the main thing that you see on the back of it, that is something called an Ori Grid, and it's by a company called Tiny Rigs, and I've been using them for about a month now, and using it pretty consistently, because one of the main things that I wanted to test out with this Ori Grid and with this Tiny Rigs accessory is the elasticity and how long and how well it holds up just by being held on together by elastic bands, essentially. So basically what this is, is an organizer for the back of your Magic Keyboard to be able to carry everything that you would need for maybe a quick out of the office work session, or maybe even, like I said, if you're traveling for a day or two and you don't want to bring a whole backpack and you just want to grab your iPad stuff, this is literally so perfect because, again, it slides onto the Magic Keyboard itself with a couple of kind of like sock-like elasticity bands that, are, that go on there. Slips in, once it slips in, you just kind of leave it there. It, it doesn't come into contact with those three pin connectors, so it's never in the way of the Magic Keyboard. So once it's on there, then you just slap the iPad Pro, and it works perfectly with the Magic Keyboard and the iPad Pro, and even how the iPad Pro magnetically attaches to the keyboard itself, even that helps kind of hold that Ori grid in place even better. 
But once it's on there, it's very simple. It's a very simple accessory. All it is is just an Ori grid organizer. So you can see that there's all these different bands and loops for you to kind of put different accessories into. You can tighten them, you can loosen them, you can change the orientation of them. You can kind of weave them in any situation that you would want to. So if you have a large accessory, you can need a, a lot more space. But if you have tiny accessories, then you can kind of weave them and see how those fit however you want to. So it's fully customizable. And then on top of that, on the bottom section, for me personally, I have two different pockets. I have the XL pocket, which is a zipper pocket, and then a smaller magnetic kind of little clasp. It's almost like a button, but it's with magnets. So it's a little clasp that's, that's perfect for a charging brick or your AirPods or something like that. So that's what the Ori Grid is. It's just an organizer for you to keep all of your iPad accessories, you know, chargers or even iPhone accessories kind of just on the back of your iPad at all times so you never have to lose them, right? So that is the Ori Grid. Like I said, I'm gonna leave them commented down below. I'm gonna leave them in the description below if you guys wanna check them out on Amazon. It helps the channel out a little bit too because Amazon gives us that kickback. But for the price, and it ranges anywhere from like $30 to $45 depending on what finish you want and then also what iPad you're gonna use it for, whether it's the 11, the 10.9 inch iPad Air 4 or the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. But if we continue on with the accessories that I always bring with, with me that I did not actually put on the Ori Grid because it was just a little bit too big, and this is the 20,000 milliamp hour power bank that I have by RAV Power. So it's a 20,000 milliamp hour battery. It charges via USB-C. You do have USB-C out, which gives you up to 30 watts out. So you can fast charge anything. You can even charge your MacBook Pro, your MacBook Air, your iPad, whatever you want. It's got a fast charging USB-A, so up to 18 watts out on there. And on top of that, it has an AC outlet, which basically allows it to output as much power as the brick that you're putting on there will give you. So I put a 100 watt brick on there. Yes, it drains that 20,000 milliamp hour battery pretty quickly, but at the same time, you are outputting that much power to, let's say, your iPad Pro or your laptop or something a little bit bigger. But like I said, 20,000 milliamp hours, it charges everything that I would need. You know, the, the iPad Pro, I can charge it twice over, my iPhone like four or five times over. So it's a perfect accessory to have in a bag or on you at all times because it's the perfect amount, it's a perfect size, it just doesn't fit on this Ori Grid itself. But now the rest of the accessories that I'm gonna mention actually fit on the Ori Grid. So the first one we're gonna start off with are my AirPods Pro. So for audio, I carry my AirPods Pro since, again, since day one, since November 2019, I wanna say at this point, so I've had them for a while now. So I mean, let's see if Apple maybe kinda of steps up their game a little bit or maybe they upgrade them and we'll get some new AirPods 2, AirPods Pro 2 or something like that. But Honestly, for me, they've been amazing. I've never had to replace anything. I've had the same original two earbuds, the same original case, and I just keep it in a Pataka Aramid fiber case just to, for a little added protection. And then that clip allows me to clip the actual AirPods onto the Ori Grid itself without taking up space on the Ori Grid too. So that's a perfect little combo to have. And then if we continue with the items that are on the Ori Grid itself, the next thing we're gonna talk about is my SSD, my 500 gigabyte SSD by RAV Power. So that is a USB-C SSD, not a Thunderbolt SSD. So you're gonna get about 500 to 540 megabytes download and upload, so read and write speeds on that guy. And I've had it for over two years as well. So like some of these items I've had since the very beginning of the channel. And what I do with this SSD is pretty much offload final. So I don't save my clips and put it into a SSD that I then go back to. This is literally just my finalized rendered and exported movie files that I put on here just for safekeeping. So that's all that I have on that SSD. And then now I'm slowly starting to work off of that SSD with the new update to LumaFusion, which has been amazing. Stay tuned for a video on that because that's gonna be a fun one. The next thing I have is a USB-C hub by a company called Andobil. And I've had this one for a while as well. I believe it's a nine in one USB-C hub. The only thing that it doesn't have is a headphone jack. So if you need a headphone jack, I'll link a couple other ones in the description below that do include a headphone jack. But this one I really like because it's an eight or nine in one, I believe. It's got three USB-A's, an HDMI, an Ethernet, another USB-A on the other side, USB-C out and in, micro SD card and SD card slots, and it's all in this little compact USB-C hub that fits in there, and it's been the most reliable portable USB-C hub that I've had, period. I've had a bunch of different USB-C hubs, especially portable ones. They usually die out on me if I'm spending like 30 bucks on them. They're not gonna last a long time, but this one I think is around 40, 50, maybe 60, depending on when you're looking for it, and it's lasted me over a year. And I've had a bunch of different USB-C and Thunderbolt docks that those usually last a lot longer, but you're spending about 150 to $200 on those. And those are kind of desk solutions, but for on the go, this one by Andabil has been absolutely awesome. Then we have a couple other auxiliary accessories that I like to have here. So I have my AirPods charger and then a Apple Watch charger by Satechi, the USB-C ones. So I can plug them in either to that 20,000 milliamp hour battery that I just showed you, or plug it into the side of my iPad and be able to charge my Apple Watch on the go if I need some extra juice because Again, I use it every single day, and now with the Series 5, I maybe get one day battery life. So again, Apple Watch battery life has never been that good. 
And there's a few other products that I do like to bring with me at all times. The first one is my MX Anywhere S2 by Logitech. We are gonna upgrade it to the S3 finally, I believe, after about a year and a half to two years of use. The Logitech S2, the Anywhere S2, has been amazing. It's a compact mouse. It's like the little brother or little sister to the MX Master or the MX Master 3. It doesn't have that crazy ergonomic feel, but it's still perfect, it's small, it's compact. You recharge it via micro USB, which is the only downside to it, but if you do find the MX Anywhere S2, they're always on sale. In the S3, the only upgrade to it was the USB-C charging. There wasn't really much else that was upgraded to it. So for this mouse, the it's been amazing. It's a perfect amount of heft. It doesn't feel cheap. And again, I mean, when, when it was brand new, it still was 100 bucks, but now I think they're around 60 to 70. And in my opinion, this is the best or the cheapest high quality mouse that you can get. And that is the MX Anywhere S2. And again, everything that I mentioned, I'm gonna leave down in the description below for you guys to check out and make some educated purchasing decisions moving forward for the iPad Pro or maybe even your MacBook Air, whatever the case may be. And then I also carry two more things on me that are more iPhone related, but I keep them in here because A, they fit, and two, I need them for travel. One is this ultra wide lens by a company called Sandmark. Super awesome, it requires their, their case to be involved, so you need their proprietary case in order to screw this on which is totally fine, but this ultra wide lens, what it allows me to do is use the main camera, the main sensor on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, but then use an ultra wide lens to get some more viewing angles, as opposed to using the ultra wide on the, on the 11 Pro Max, which usually when you're going with the ultra wide with the built in sensor, the quality lessens and you need more, more light and you just need more in order to get the same crispness and quality out of the main lens that you do with the ultra wide lens and the built in ultra wide lens. So that's why the Sandmark lens really does help me out when it comes to A roll and some B roll and just being able to capture more people in the shot while keeping quality as well. And then the last thing that I wanna mention is a alternative to the new MagSafe battery pack that Apple has put out. So that $100 battery pack, people said it's too expensive, not enough wattage, you know, not enough milliamp hours, doesn't charge fast enough. And that the only reason you're paying $100 is for that integration to know that everything kind of charges together, you know exactly how much battery it has, which is a very cool perk. And that's one of the biggest perks to having Apple products or first party products. But people forget that Pataka has been doing this mag easy stuff for like two, three, four years now. And this one by Pataka, it's their newest one. It's their mag easy juice pack two. I've been using it for a while now and I had their V1 for a while. It's the same exact concept. I think you get four to 5,000 milliamp hours in this guy. And all you do is you slap it on the back of a mag easy case and it starts charging your iPhone, which is perfect. And for those people that don't have the iPhone 12s and don't have MagSafe, this is perfect because Pitaka's cases are built in with that MagEasy magnet. So all I do is slap this on the back of the iPhone and I'm charging wirelessly, no problem. Now, yes, I'm not getting that awesome integration into the OS and I can't see exactly how much is left on this battery pack, but you just take it off. There's four little dots on here, just like any other battery pack. And it looks really clean. It's got that nice little shimmer, the rose gold, which I really like and it matches my case too. So. That is my like external battery pack of choice and my MagSafe alternative. But those are all the accessories that I carry with me when I'm traveling for, I guess, more than 24 hours, but not long enough where I want to bring a whole backpack or anything like that. Or maybe if I'm going just to a quick coffee shop, but I need my SSDs and things like that. And maybe I want to do some shots outside with my lens. So that's what's great about the Ori Grid, right? It kind of keeps every, all the items that you would need in arm's distance right in front of you. So you can get that job done and you know get rid of that task on hand and make sure that you're getting it done correctly and efficiently. So like I said, I'm gonna mention all these products down in the description below. Feel free to check them out. Anytime you guys click on one of those links, it does help out the channel just that much more, which would be awesome. But like I said, I've had a lot of these products for a while. The MX Anywhere S2, my Andable USB-C, my Magic Keyboard, the Paperlike Screen Protector. I've had these for a while and they're just tried and true. So I hold on to them and they make my life more efficient, a little bit better, a little bit easier. And that's what I wanna do by kind of sharing this with you guys. But sorry for the long video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and check out everything in the description below. Until next time, peace.